Welcome, 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 welcome back. You know, you always have a seat at the table. Our next guest is an educator, an influencer, a mental health advocate, and wellness enthusiast. She joins us today to um, advocate for the increased need for support services in the wake of gun violence and much, much more. So please welcome uh, Dr. Nadia Lopez. Dr. Lopez, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. All right. You, 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 I know you, we're not uh, used to getting into this platform right here, but we're using this one today. All right. So thank you once again for joining us. Of course. Doctor, tell us about some of the things uh, that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in the work, uh, and how you got started in uh, becoming a mental health uh, advocate uh, in this wellness space. Well, I became an educator in uh, the early 2000s and realized that, especially in our community, there was a need for mental health support. Um, there wasn't a lot of community-based organizations or partnerships with schools. And we had so many young people who were demonstrating mental health needs. And in order for us to provide academic support and really close gaps, we really, really need to focus on making sure our young people are safe, that they have an opportunity to express themselves and really engage in conversations about what's going on with them to provide them with strategies for them to navigate through life. Um, and so my journey from being a teacher to becoming a principal led me to really focus on not only mental health for our young people, but also for our teachers and all of our staffs in our schools, because simply vicarious trauma is real. The things that we deal with in our own personal lives, we often bring them to work. Um, and if we don't address that, that could really lead to tremendous problems. So. Even myself, I needed to get mental health support in order to be effective as a leader. Um, so now I am coaching, I am supporting leaders, and making sure that they have what they need. Thank you. Tell us about the stigma. Did you feel funny when you thought that maybe you needed to get some sort of a mental health uh, help? You know, I, I was already aware of the stigma that existed in our community. Yeah. Um, so I just tackled it off straight on. I made sure to talk about it and the reasons why they exist. I felt like I needed to be the example and really tell folks, like, the, <laughs> the world isn't easy. And i rather get the help that is needed as opposed to playing the game of I'm okay, I'm always going to be strong, I got it all together. That's not helpful for myself, and it wasn't really helpful for me as a single mom raising um, a little girl who was going to become a young woman herself and having to navigate through this life. Yeah. You know, it's a tough thing. A lot of people suppress their feelings, and they go on, you think everybody's all right, but, uh, you know, we know a lot of people in the business, and even in, 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 in life, Average people who you think may be okay, but you come find out, come to find out that they have a serious, deeper problem within that they're not just talking about to anybody, and you'll never know until something difficult happens in their lives. Absolutely. So tell us how you combat that. There's a lot of people watching probably and listening, um, and they may be experiencing those type of feelings. What do you tell them? So I always tell them that they have to find someone that they trust, right? Whether it's a friend or um, finding a community-based organization. Mental health is really, really important. But what we tend not to discuss is the quality of the mental health that's available in our communities. Yeah. Um, we need to find individuals who have a cultural connection. We need to find individuals who can really empathize with our circumstances. And we need to find someone who's going to make sure that they give us the time and create a safe space. Um, because not all mental health providers, even though they may have a license, are individuals who you would actually want servicing you because they can actually trigger more traumas um, than actually be helpful. Yeah. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, you know, find circles and spaces, whether it's 
uh, organizations that are on social media, organizations that exist in your church, organizations that exist amongst your circle of friends. And that's the thing that we don't do. We don't have conversations about it. We actually have to be the ones to normalize conversations about mental health. I do it with my girlfriends. Um, I do it with young people. I think that it just requires one of us to talk about it. And then it gives permissions to others to say, you know what, I'm going through the same thing. But unless we're willing to be transparent and vulnerable our, about our own personal circumstances, people will think that we have perfect lives. They will think that they are not able to talk about those things and feel the stigma and judgment. Yeah. Tell us about the, your own company, uh, your company, the Lopez Effect. Wow. Watch out now, the Lopez Effect, and what services that you offer. So the Lopez Effect uh, provides a blueprint for transforming education in a very disruptive way, um, an innovative way. And, and when I say that, it's like I've worked in the education system. I worked in the New York City Department of Ed. I opened yeah. up a school in Brownsville. And so I understand, you know, a lot of the nuances. I understand that there is a direct connection between the school to prison pipeline. And so the question is always like, why can't we improve education? It's a matter of who's doing the work to improve education and who's willing to challenge the status quo and mediocrity that exists um, in our education system, because a lot of it has to do with people who don't have vision. So my work is around supporting um, and providing leadership coaching to principals and those who are aspiring. So that's APs and individuals who feel like they're ready to take that leap. Um, but also I do cons consultations with companies um, around social responsibilities and districts in order to do that transformative work. Now, we saw you at the podium at Harvard University. <laughs> you yeah. do a lot of speaking engagements, right? Um, what I, do you have I, coming up that we can uh, maybe participate in or, or find out more about? Well, you know, the best thing is for folks to follow me on my social media sites. So that could be Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, as well as LinkedIn. And all of those are at The Lopez Effect. Um, I will be speaking in Orlando at a conference, um, and that's coming up in a couple of weeks. But I tend to do a lot of virtual online community com conversations yeah. on Sundays. I host Tea With Me, in which I have educators um, have a, created a safe space for them to talk about some of the challenges that they're dealing with in their work sites, talking about strategies to best support them, whether it's to maintain what they're doing at their work in terms of the sustainability or actually talking about what your next steps will be. Because we, we're not, let me say this, we're called to do this work, but we're not called to carry the cross to yeah. do this work. And I believe that each and every one of us has to choose ourselves, especially when we are um, the breadwinners, especially when we have children and we are the example in the classroom. You can't become a martyr because that doesn't save anyone. Yeah. Well, Dr. Lopez, you know, uh, due to the pandemic and, uh, and other situations in our community and in our country, there are Absolutely. a lot of people who need to uh, see healthcare workers or who need to talk to people and, and shouldn't be embarrassed or ashamed of it. Um, I know there's that big stigma out there, but uh, I think we need to just uh, pick up the phone or uh, go to the web or, or just tr try to find out about someone who can help them with different situations or just talk about it. Um, you have a website. Can they, can they reach out to you? Um, they definitely can. It's www.thelopezeffect. Um, and they can also reach me by email at Nadia, N-A-D-I-A, at The Lopez Effect. And to your point, Bob, um, I would say that our community and those organizations within our community also have to be at the forefront because people are looking for answers, which yeah. means they're looking for leadership. And so our churches need to create those spaces as well. Our community-based organizations have to, our elected officials have to start tapping into mental health services um, and make it accessible. Um, when people see that it is normalized, when people see that it is accessible, they will actually go out and engage and get the therapy that they need. Um, but if we don't make it accessible or we get the kind of quality care that no one wants to go to and has yeah. a negative experience, it makes it worse for future generations. Doctor, thank you so much. We appreciate you. 
Dr. Nadia Lopez. She's the founder, The Lopez Effect. Watch out. She's got it going on. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Have a great one. All right. We're going to take a quick break right here. Woo! You're going to want to check this out. Bobby C., he has the latest in the world of sports. It's coming up next. <laughs>